on the 31st of March, we're going to be holding a couples meeting together with my husband. It's going to be at JCC Parklands and it's going to be awesome. Last year we had amazing couples dinner. It was so, so, so beautiful. And we were just open and candid, spoke about everything. And this year we are taking it even a notch higher. I want you to invite all your couple friends. And if you're a couple, it's only 4,000 shillings for the dinner. And normally the dinner is absolutely out of this world. So I want you to get ready for the couple's dinner. You don't want to miss it for anything. So make sure you're here on the 31st. We're going to be having an amazing couple's dinner. Don't let what you've done hinder you. Hinder you. Don't you let where you've been hinder you. Don't let what they've said hinder you. Hinder you. Don't you let your past hinder you. You're a woman. Good evening, viewers. You're welcome to Women Without Limits. I'm so delighted that you tuned in today, and I know that God is going to bless you. He's an amazing God. He never changes. The Word of God tells us He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So whatever it is that you've been waiting on God to do, He is faithful. Let every man be a liar, but God be true. Woman Without Limits is here to change destinies. It is here to change totally catapult you to where God wants you to be. It's here to introduce you to your purpose and let you know that you are born with a purpose and for a purpose. You're not just another statistic. You are here to make a difference. And so God loves you and this program is just for you. I want to thank you for all the feedback that you keep it coming and letting us know how we are affecting your lives. That to us is amazing, is of tremendous uh, uh, um, uh, impact. And so we want you to keep on just sending them and then tweeting us and, uh, you know, Facebooking us and whatever. However you get in touch with us, please go ahead and do that because it means a lot to us. Today we have yet another story. I tell you, I met this woman and she told me uh, a story that I thought, wait a minute, I don't need to be the only one who hears this. The world needs to hear it. Her name is Susan, often at a very tender age, but her story will revolutionize your life. A few weeks ago, we aired a little testimony that she, came, she brought, a very short one, like maybe a minute or so, and the feedback that we got was completely amazing. And people began to call us and ask us, what's her number? How can we get her? And so we knew you need the full copy of the full story because that was just a snippet of a very short clip. Today, we are going to host her and I know that God is going to bless you. Would you welcome with me, Susan on set. <laughs> Hi, Ma. How are you? Fine, thank you. Nakukapo. <laughs> As for good. the shoes, everything, you look nice. It's good, Mom. Yeah. And mm. the hair. Mm. You just have to be like your mother. Yeah, okay. like mother, like daughter. <laughs> <laughs> it is well with you. Yeah. Susan, tell us about you. You were orphaned at a very tender age. Yeah. So maybe you can start from there and tell us who Susan is. Well, I was born some years back. <laughs> a few years back. A few years. Yeah. A few years back. There yeah. are very few actually. Yes. Yeah, to one Mr. and Mrs. Njoroge. But later on, just fate, and I lost my parents at the age of 11. 
Yeah. Both of them. Yeah, both of them, but one year after the other. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Both with just, I didn't, at that time, mom, I didn't understand because the what my uncles were telling me, your dad died from pulmonary things. Just a lot of uh, jargon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a medical jargon, but yeah. I, at that time I didn't understand. But my mom went first, then my dad was left with us. But now my dad would not bear the burden of being both a mother and a father. And so I think out of the depression and out of the pressure, I think he succumbed to pressure. Because for real, he was lonely. Because my parents were happy. They were happy together. They were happy. And later on, that is when we were orphaned. So we now had to go to my paternal grandmother's home. Before my parents died, we were doing very well, mom. Mm. Yeah, we, we never knew. Actually, we never knew what was matatu. What? We never knew what was not having sausages for breakfast. But when m my parents died, now we, we needed to go to my paternal grandmother and that is when we realized, wow. Life began. Now this is life. Tell me, mm. you were only 11, were you the firstborn? Yes, I was the firstborn. Oh wow. Yes, I was How the many first siblings born. are So you? when my, uh, three, we were three siblings. When my mom died, I mm. assumed the role of a mother. Washing clothes, cooking. <laughs> at I only, 11? At 11. I wow. perfectly assumed the role of a mother. Right. Because my dad would tell me, go to the market, buy food serves, come and cook for your sisters, I'll be coming late. So that is, I had to assume, I, it just, I had to be a mother. Right. I had two sisters behind me. Mm -hmm. Later on, after we had gone to my paternal grandmother's, uh, to my paternal grandmother, uh, later on, my, I also lost my small sister to malaria. Oh. Mm? my small sister, because according to her, she could not handle the pressure of not having the luxuries that we used to have. Oh. Yeah, the sausages and the good life and everything. Because mom, it was from r riches to rags. That's what I can call it. Instantly like I this. I had to cut my hair and I had very long hair. I had to cut my hair because my grandmother would not afford both food and hair, hair, and food was a struggle. So I had to cut my hair and yeah. Mm. Mm. So now when you moved to your paternal grandmother, were you in school? We were in school before. Mm. We were in very good school, very good private schools before. But now when we went to my paternal grandmother's home, we had to go to this school where my grandmother had literally to go and beg kindly. These are my, you know, my son died. So kindly help my grandchildren. So in the school, mom, you are seated in class like this and you are seeing, who is that passing? <laughs> <laughs> and you're in class because so the walls have fallen. They oh. were mud, mud. Oh. Yeah, they were mud walls. So you could peep through the wall and see who is uh, someone is passing in class. Yeah, yeah, in class. So the concentration, of course, was no. Yeah, <laughs> was no there was no yeah. concentration. Uh -huh. Yeah, because it was actually just like a, sm a school there, a, like a small school which. The, it was bad. Mom, so the was adjustment very bad. was terrible. It was bad. How long did it take you to just adjust? Realize, to hey, just say, hey, yeah. now I have to live life. <laughs> I never. I never accepted. I never adjusted because I was like, this is not the life I know. I used to tell my uncle that I have to get rich for my own self. I have to be to get back to the life that I know because this is not our life. This is not our life. We used to be driven, chauffeured to school and back to shopping malls. And here we are. We can't even afford a hairdo. Right. Yeah. Oh mm. my goodness. And mm. of course your grandmother could not understand. What's all what this fuss of is? hairdo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to put food on the food on the table and you are talking about hairdo. Yeah. And I, uh, I didn't want to stress her. I didn't want to stress her. Because mm -hmm. she had already lost her son, lost her daughter in law, lost her grandchild. So again, I didn't want to stress no, that her. was tough. It was very When tough. you lost your sister, how was that? After how long? After your parents? Mm, like four years. Four. four years. So it's like every other mm. year. Like your mom That was and actually your dad. the death that hurt me most. Because this was a sibling. It hurt me most. Mm. More than what my parents did. It hurt me more than. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm. So tell me. Mm. So at a tender age, you mm. started fending for yourself basically. Yeah. Yeah, I had to do the chores, shamba work, go to school. And I was the brightest, by the way. 
fate had it that I was the brightest. In spite of all that? In spite of all that. Were you reading hard or it was just happening? It was just because I had there come to a high end. There are some people who are blessed. <laughs> <laughs> it was just because I had come from a high end school yeah. to a low end school. Oh, okay. So the standards. The levels, the levels were very different. Yeah, very different. Yeah. Yeah, very different. Okay. Yeah. So your, your childhood mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. you can say was full of pain? It was painful, extremely painful, mm -hmm. extremely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you heal along the way? And like you, okay, you said, it's you. You took. A l you said forever. You haven't. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you I never recover. accepted the okay. the circumstances uh -huh. and the conditions. Right. But al along the way, God was gracious because I met with this couple, Mr. and Mrs. Wagashira, and they adopted me. They took me in, and they were. I could. I could at least. Now I had a mother, and they had a father, and they had mm. sisters. Mm. And they had brothers. And they had the sausages now, at last. Oh. <laughs> they had... <laughs> <laughs> sausages, you <Yeah. laughs> And oh hairdos, and makeup, and good shoes, good clothes. Yeah. Wow. Also, oh, yeah. when they took you in, yes. they took you as their baby, and they took care of you Yeah, everywhere. they were well up. Yeah. They were good. Mm -hmm. they were good. How did you meet? You were saying they were We neighbors. met in church. We met in church. And then you just went home with them? Word had gone round. You yeah. see, my dad was very well up. Yeah. So in the village, word had gone round that Mr. Njoroge died and now his children are back to Shags. So they already know. They, because that's the church that my grandmother used to go. So when we would go to church, I would sing. I used to love singing. I would go to church, I would sing, and they would see me, this beautiful girl. So my mom just, that my mom now, approached me and said, do you have a talent? And do not let your circumstances bring you down and i was like wow at least this is someone who is who cares yeah who yeah. is showing me that i have something mm. so i started going to her house myself started going visiting okay yeah where is your mm. house she told me <laughs> this is where <laughs> we live i started going to her house when you visiting. saw the house you said it's okay um, i just um, I've i can't locate it <laughs> <laughs> mom when i saw the house i was <laughs> like ah yeah, I've relocated. I'm officially mm. yours. Yeah, I'm yours. <laughs> <laughs> what do you so want me to do with me? Just do it. <laughs> so sometimes, mom, wow. yeah. I would not go back home. And we had a big fight with my grandmother. Mm. I would not go back home. I was like, I, I want to sleep on a good bed today. Yes. So <laughs> I would and not eat go sausage. back. Yeah, at least. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and use a shower. Mm. Mm. I, wow. would, I would like, I would not go back home. And my grandmother was very annoyed. Right. Why aren't you coming back home? Then along the way, to cut a long story short, along the way, now I was fully incorporated into the family. Okay. Because now, the moment I didn't go back home, like for one week, my grandmother and her friends came now to this home and said, why have you taken our, our, our child? Yeah. And, and my, my mom was like, we don't know how to chase her away. We don't know how to tell her, go back home. So she's just, I don't know what to do. Myself, I don't know what to do. Mm. And my father, now my foster father, was a very, very strict man. Extremely strict. But people wondered, how comes Mr. Awashiro is not able to chase this girl away? Because one day when my mother confronted him and asked him, what do you feel as having another child into this home? He was like, I can't chase her away. I can't chase her away. I can't you tell her stay. to go. Yeah. So let her just stay. Yeah. Oh, God's way sometimes yeah. of doing things. Yeah. Right? So did your grandmother at the end of the day At understand? the end of the day, my grandmother mm -hmm. actually told me that she was, one day she was in a market and she met with this prophet, you know the prophets, and the prophet told her that don't worry about Susan because Susan's destiny is written down. Whoa. Don't worry about her. Whatever she does, she's in the line of destiny. Just leave her. Just leave her. <laughs> And that's what my grandmother so did. So your grandmother now was on with only si one sister of mine. Only yours. with one sister of mine. And you now with, with this family. With this so family. So you enjoyed them. You can say they I are was good happy. Mm -hmm. with, they brought me to Nairobi. Yeah. Eh? Uh, Nairobi. I never knew what's <laughs> Nairobi. They brought me to Nairobi, paid my school fees, housed me, got me a good job. And that's how life change right it was appointment with destiny Amen. as you always say yes. yeah <laughs> it was appointment oh, uh, with destiny yeah, yeah. Mm. okay so tell us mm. now mm. What, at what point did you mm. uh, give your life to the lord or were you i were was you always a church person oh mom i never knew anything else except oh. church really? and except god i never knew oh yes you yeah. even said you met them in church yeah i met them in church yeah i was singing 
right. in church. I was a Sunday school teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So now you're in Nairobi. Now we are in Nairobi. Working. Working. Is new friends. I try to go to church. But the friends I got in Nairobi were like, ah, you, you are so boring. Because you need to church. yeah watch church. You need to now you are in another life. You are not in shags. You need to put yourself together and let's go out and <laughs> hey mom, <laughs> hey my friends pushed me. They pushed me, mom. The friends I got. Hey, that's the first time I ever took my first sip of wine. Oh, mm. the friends told you even here there is wine. Yeah, mm -hmm. mm. wine is not bad. It's biblical actually. Yes, that's what they told me. Okay, mm. they told so you me. went in that direction now. Yeah. Did you go inside, Kabisa? <laughs> <laughs> they always say that sometimes the student is better than the teacher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you overtook the teachers? I overtook the teachers. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> you told them this wine, let me show you how it This goes. wine is good, yes. but mom, I never took any other thing except the wine. Because mm. it is what my friends told me, this is good. Don't take the others. If you take the others, you will not be born again. Yes. Yeah. This Just take wine. Yes. Yeah, wine is, yeah. So, and you took it well? <laughs> <laughs> not really, mom. There was that voice within me always reminding me that remember you are born again. Remember you are a servant of God. That voice ever, ever disturbed me to the extent I was never able to dance in a club. Never. Because I would think everyone was seeing and knowing that I'm born again I'm, and I'm doing the wrong thing. Mm. Yeah. And then my mom used to tell us that any time, now my, at least I confuse you, yes. my foster mom yes. used to tell us, if you do anything wrong, the Holy Spirit will show me and I am going to punish you. So that's what I knew. That your mother will see? Yes. So you'd rather not just go that direction? Yes, because she will surely see. Okay. Mm. So tell me now, mm -hmm. fast forward. Yeah. You've come to the point now you're married. Mm. How did you meet this wonderful man? <laughs> I met this wonderful man through my best friend. They were colleagues, and so they were having lunch in this hotel. Then my colleague, my best friend, invites me for lunch. And I find, him, I find her with this guy. I'm like, hey, today at least you have a handsome man. The rest of the times I always find you with <laughs> <laughs> bad looking men. <laughs> people people only mothers can love. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> At least for today you have a hug. Yeah. Who is this hug? <laughs> yeah. Hey, and my best friend tell me he's called Samuel and uh, we are just colleagues. Yeah. And after that we exchange numbers with Samuel. And after that, Sam calls me, we have lunch, one, two, three lunches. And mom that time, you remember I I rewind you, eh? Okay. You remember I told you that I hated poverty. Mm? Oh, you had I hated that. everything that looks yes, poor. not it. Mm. I, I hated everything that didn't look a uh, high standard. Yeah. I hated everything that didn't look good life. So I was just sizing up all men who came my way. <laughs> my first question would be like, do you have a car? Because <laughs> I, I can't be entering into a matatu. And, and I have a man. With you. Yeah. <laughs> in the, to this same matter. <laughs> so I asked when I met. We can't enter together. <laughs> I can <laughs> enter alone. Yes. But, but not with my man. Yeah. Into the matter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, when I met my husband, my, boy, my boyfriend then, I asked him, do you have a car? Mm. And he was like, ah, yeah, I have some cars. I was like, oh, that's oh, nice. Some cars. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. Mm -hmm. mm. If you have cars, at least we can talk. Yes. We can start a conversation. At least we can talk. Okay. Because I hated anything yes. that didn't look like it or anything mm. that would take me back to where life had pushed me. After coming from up, then down, then down, you never wanted I to go down again. never wanted to go down again. Right. Never. Uh -huh. Yeah. So he told you he does have some cars. Yeah, he does have some cars. Did cuts. he? He did. Because you know me, I he remember did. my mother telling me, <laughs> my father told her, mm. I have a very big house mm. back home. Yeah. <laughs> and then she mm. went and lo and behold. Mm. <laughs> So where is the house? <laughs> he said, what is it now? <laughs> we are together. <laughs> <laughs> it is me and you that matter. So my mother never yeah. forgot. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. He uh -huh. didn't have the cars. Yeah. He did. And he was uh. very aggressive. Uh. He was very aggressive. Right. Because he was like, use whichever car you want. Mm. This some man. Yes. Hello. Mm. Yeah. I remember I had a function, a very good function, whereby I was going to tell my foster parents, thank you for what you have done. And it was a very big Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And he was like, don't worry about how people, your friends will go to Nakuru. I have a van. 
they will your friends will hey, be ferried. Okay, this mm -hmm. Sam, he yeah. was serious. Yes, he was very serious. Okay. And on top of that he gave me ten thousand. To buy food for the function. On the way, oh, there now. Before. Okay, mm. okay. Mm. And so there was another small car now to bring him to the function. Yes. Yeah. And the van had already come before. <laughs> hey, I was like, this good at least. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your prayers have been answered. And they have been answered. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How long did you take to get married? Mm. Actually, ma'am, we didn't take long. Mm. Mm. Remember I had backslidden? Oh. Yeah, so we were doing what backslidden people do. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so they live. Yeah. <laughs> we were living. Yes. Yeah, so in the course of doing what backslidden people do, mm. I, I became pregnant. Oh. Yeah. In that course. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I became pregnant, mm -hmm. and so my husband was like, I know where you're coming from, and I cannot be able to abandon you. I have to marry you. I was like, marry me. Without a wedding, mm. if you want to marry me, you have to wedding fast, fast. Yes. Fast, fast. He was like, I don't have the money for a quick wedding. I don't have the money. I was like, okay, let's, then I have to move to your house. And he was like, okay, I'll think about it. But by the time he was thinking about it. You were inside. I was inside the house. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. I had run away actually, mom, because I couldn't, I couldn't face my mother. And tell her now you're pregnant. I couldn't. And she's always told you I can see you. Yes. Yeah. And I remember she had not seen me. She had not seen <laughs> yeah. all that while. Right. So I was very, I was ashamed. I was mm. ashamed of myself. Mm. I was ashamed. I felt that I had let her down. I felt li like that I had let the church down. Because everyone in the church, I was a darling in my local church. So mom, I had to run away and switch off my phone. Now it was my mother's work to look for me all over. Wondering where to start. Yeah. I switched off my phone completely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so tell me. Mm -hmm. uh, f uh, fast forward, mm. how did you now reconcile mm. and with and the everything yeah. that was happening? I called her. I decided, let me stop punishing this woman because all woman. she has done is love me. Let me stop punishing her, taking her through a lot of turmoil and torments. So I switched on my phone, and the first person that instantly called me was her. And what did you tell her? I told her, I'm sorry. I let you down, I'm pregnant, but I can come home, we talk. She said, yeah, come now, today, not tomorrow. Mm. We need to talk. Mm. I was like, okay, I don't have bus fare. Okay, let me send you. And she sent, and we went, and I apologized, and we talked, and she prayed for me, prayed for my baby. And then I came back to Nairobi and told my husband, you know what, now we are married. <laughs> 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 we are married. <laughs> Lest you think I'm just another woman. Yes, we, we are, are married, married now. Yes. Because I can never be a single mother. Yes. <laughs> and so, if you want to make me a single mother, it's you who will be the single father. Me, we are married. Yes. Yeah. And he was like, me, I'm ready. I'm of age. <laughs> this double portion, wife, yes. child, everything. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To him, he was excited. Right. Yeah, because he was of age. Yeah, he mm. was ready for right. a family. Right. Yeah. So that's how you began? Did you now do a, a proper marriage, wedding? No. Mm -hmm. But we went home and paid the dowry and officiated everything and came back. But okay. I'm trusting God for a wedding. Amen. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, you officiated. You we did, officiated, you did yeah. the, yeah. the um, mm. traditional Yeah, we one. did the traditional wedding. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So you are married? Yeah. Yeah. The we are married. You're married. We are happily legally. married. Even yeah, legally, yeah. by law, mm. you are married and that's mm. good. So you are happily mm. married. Yeah, we are happy. Okay, married. now tell me mm. the journey because mm. you have three children. I have three you children. You now got the second one mm. after how long? That was the firstborn. Eh? Mm -hmm. Well, I was breastfeeding the firstborn. I got the second one. Now, Jeremy. You are the icing quick, of the fast cake. and in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I told you that I was an innocent girl. Yeah. I was innocent. I was innocent. All I knew was church, nothing else. So I didn't know about family planning. I didn't know anything. Yeah, I was just this small, uh, beautiful wife inside the house. Mm. So I got my, my second baby, that's Jeremy. And, uh, that's after a one good year, name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, after one year, the Jeremy, I realized that Jeremy was not saying any word. And then people used to tell me, don't worry, boys are always late sometimes. Don't worry, you just wait. Hi, two, two years down the line, mom. There's no word, not even mom or dad or anything. Three years again, no word. 
I was like, oh God, what's happening? No, I started praying for my son, fasting. My mom used to call me, has the baby spoke? Has he said any word? I was like, no, but when he say, I'll tell you. So the pressure was too much from the society. Now friends would come and tell him hi, and you didn't even know, you didn't talk. So when it went, to, like, it went on uh, until about four years, then four years I told my husband, hey, this praying and fasting. No, I need to, uh, I need, we need now to seek professional help. So that's when we went and, s and saw this neurologist and he was quick to drop the bone shell mm, that your son has autism. Really? Mm. We'll be right back mm. after this. Mm. Ooh, ma. On the 31st of March, we're going to be holding a couples meeting together with my husband. It's going to be at JCC Parklands and it's going to be awesome. Last year we had amazing couples dinner. It was so, so, so beautiful. And we were just open and candid, spoke about everything. And this year we are taking it even a notch higher. I want you to invite all your couple friends. And if you're a couple, it's only 4,000 shillings for the dinner. And normally the dinner is absolutely out of this world. So I want you to get ready for the couple's dinner. You don't want to miss it for anything. So make sure you're here on the 31st. We're going to be having an amazing couple's dinner. And you're welcome back. You're watching Woman Without Limits. Susan. Yes. What? Wow. Mm. Initially, I had worked in a clinic. And so uh, during my work with the doctors, I, I had done a lot of research. Because my boss, Dr. Wangata, was very strict. He was like, you have to do your own research. You don't just sit here pretty. You have to know what's all the, the, the diseases and the problems that people come here. Before they see me, you already have dealt with them. So during my research, I had read about autism. And then when the doctor had dropped the bombshell that your son has autism, that's when I remembered, I hope it is not that thing that I had seen on the internet, this autism thing. Ah, but uh, it, I did the crying. Uh, when you hear, when you receive bad news, see there's that denial moment. So I did the crying, I did the denial, and my husband was like, doctors are bad, they are liars, leave them. Is the, he doesn't have that thing. He doesn't have autism. My yeah. son is good. He's perfect. He actually can play with the phone, play with the computer. My husband is a very strong man. He was very, very courageous. He was actually encouraging me and telling me that he doesn't have that, that thing. But I was like, from my research, everything that I had read, he has everything. The problems with social interaction, the speech, the, the hyperactivity, he had them all. So it came to a time that I realized that I have to accept that my son has autism. And after I was through with the crying and the denying, mom and the praying, I told God, you can't just leave me like that. You have to show me why did you give me this child? Why did you let this happen to me? After all, I have served you. In as much I, as I had backslidden, now this is my conversation with God. In as much as I, I had backslidden, I asked you to forgive me. And you forgave me. <laughs> and you forgave me. So why? Why this? And that is when God started showing me the purpose of my son. And after I realized that God really wanted me to have my son not only for myself, but also to encourage other mothers. And that is what mom have been doing right mm -hmm. now. Uh, actually, that is why we started the school with my able partner, Mr. Haron Kimani. Haron, hi Haron. <laughs> 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 He was a frustrated special needs teacher. I was a frustrated special needs parent. Mm. And we had the same vision, the same purpose, and we came up together. And I told him, I've been thinking, what can I do for my son? And not only for my son, but for other children who has the same issue with like autism, dyslexia. And then my, my able partner told me, it's so doable. Mm. It's doable. Once we bring our strengths together, we can always do it. I remember the first meeting I had with Mr. Harold. I told him this is the first time that I'm talking about my son and not crying. The first meeting. Really? Because everyone would ask me, how's your son Jeremy? And I would start crying. They were like, is he sick? I was like, I was, it was hurting. I was really hurt mm. by the situation. Mm. But when we talked with Mr. Harron and he encouraged me, he told me that uh, he's in the special needs and he really knows everything. And I was like, yeah, then let's start this school so that 
we can be able to help other children, not only my child, but also other children. Mm -hmm. A one-stop shop whereby the children will come, will come have speech therapy, they'll come have occupational therapy, they, we have the special needs teachers, they'll come have the special diet. Mama, I didn't tell you that after I, I had read from the net mm. that the only thing that can reverse autism was diet. Ah, really? Yeah, I had to take up a nutritionist. Tell mm. us about it, what kind of diet? The GFCF. Okay, what's that? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gluten, casein free diet. No wheat, no sugar, no milk. Yeah, so I was well versed with the diet. I knew everything. Mama did everything, everything to help my son. Mm -hmm. I did my research, I talked to doctors. I was trying the diet, I was being told, now try this one, I tried them all. Meanwhile, what was he doing? He was improving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was getting the words. Oh, really? Yeah. He was trying to speak? Yeah, uh -huh. and the words started coming, right. one after the other. Mm -hmm. He started with dad, he stayed with dad for so long, and I was like, I've done all this work and <laughs> you can't call me. <laughs> <laughs> you can't call mom <laughs> and, <laughs> and I've done <laughs> and I've been the one working <laughs> doing all the work <laughs> <laughs> and researching and researching and then you're gonna go call dad, dad only <laughs> you can't call mom <laughs> so after and he called mom he did and after my how long and my mom was like you yeah. can't say mom just mom <laughs> tell him just mom <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After how long did he call uh, mom? He called mom after like a year after saying dad. Yeah. Mm. So mom, it was one word. A month. Imagine mom a word for a month. Wow. Yet children are busy talking. Talking like kikuyu. Par yeah. My neighbor's yeah. children were talking kikuyu, Kiswahili, English, French. I was like, oh God. Not even one language. Yeah. It was devastating. It was. It was. It was hard. Yeah, it was very hard. Was he hyperactive? He was, was he hyper. Very 100% hyper. Yeah. He was jumping all over and I would sit and watch him and say, can a human being mm. jump like this? Jump without getting tired or sitting down. Like right. for an hour. Running around the whole house. Mm. Climbing on top of everything without getting tired. Mm. But after the diet, mama I succeeded with the diet. And now he's 0% hyper. What are you talking about? Yeah. Just because of the diet? Just no medicine, di just no diet? No medicine, just diet. Are you serious? Yeah. Do you know there are so many kids who are suffering from autism right now? Yeah. Wow. Mm. So, so, mm. so, so, so uh, does he cry for mm. the sugary things? No. Does he want them? No. no. I've taught him that you can't have this. It's wrong for you. It's bad. You can't have it. How old is he now? He's five. He's going five? to six, yeah. How is he talking now? How is his speech? He can say mom, he can say dad, he can call his siblings, he can call all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he can say hi, thank you, welcome, bye. Yeah. Wow. Cut up your <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So Cut up your Mr. Harron. Yes. He's the one who has been working with him with the speech. Oh, the speech, really? Yeah, the speech therapy. Right. And the occupation. So Harron is the speech therapist. Yeah. There. Mm, he's a co-director. Yeah. Yeah. We yes. are actually equal. Directors. Yes. You started together. Yes. We yes, started yes. together. Yeah. Yes. You mm. told me. Yeah. But now he's the one that does the speech therapy. He, yeah. He does all the therapies. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So tell and me. He's in charge of the academics. Uh -huh. I'm in charge of the administration. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the PR. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the counseling. Yes. Mom, the counseling. Yeah. With the mothers. Mm. Yeah, just telling them I've been there, done that. I've cried, I have denied, I've hidden my child. All that. You mm. you hid also. Yeah. I never used to go with Jeremy. Talk to too. us about that because a lot of mm. mothers yeah. you never used to go with him? No. I can't go with him. I, I never used to go with him. Because people would say hi and the next thing they would ask me, why isn't he talking? He doesn't know how to say hi. So I was traumatized. I was stigmatized. And that is what mom, the society is doing. Is stigmatized. You know, the stupid questions. Because I call them stupid because mom, you can't try talking to a child and he's not talking and you're asking, you don't talk. I, I, I mm. know exactly what you're saying because mm. my son, yeah. I would carry him, you know, we'd go to the movies. Mm. He's three years old yeah. that time mm. or four, mm. five, and mm. I would carry him. Mm. And, and uh, people would ask me, why can't you put that boy down? He's so big. Mm. Yeah, those are the... And I'm like, you know what? Mm. I won't even dignify you with an answer. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> mom, I used to answer Because I don't questions. even know you. Stop. I used to do a lot of work explaining. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't talk, but he's trying. 
He has actually managed until I was tired. I was mm. tired of now explaining to everyone. Until now, I was like, I have to showcase my son. And right now, my son, he's actually be become my papa's. I go with him everywhere. He's so cute. Mom, you won't believe it. He's so handsome. Really? He's extremely handsome. I think handsome. all Jeremy's are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's extremely handsome. Wow. My son is extremely handsome. I mean, yeah. he's so loving. Mm. He's so loving and he has a big heart, just like Jeremy. Wow. Yeah. 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 And right now, I'm not afraid of taking my son anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. And I want to encourage all mothers. Mm. Don't hide children with disabilities. Because disability is not inability. Mm. And this is not a disability. It is a difficult. It's just a difficulty. It's just a difficult. It's just a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Just because uh, other children are speaking at two years mm. and yours is not speaking, it doesn't mean he won't speak. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, and you it's know not what a disability. And every child is gifted in a different way. In a different yours way. Yours could be gifted in that talking. Yeah. Another one could be gifted in, in something thing, else. Yeah. yeah. For example, mom, I see that my, son, my first son, Daniel, who is typical, normal, talking, doing everything mm. the right way, the right time, but he's not able to use the phone like my son Jeremy. He's actually has to ask his brother, show me, help me. <laughs> the one now, <laughs> the one people now are calling special yes, and in right. need of help. No, he's actually, mm. he's good. Mm. He's an IT guru. Mm. Amen. He's good. Amen. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Wow. He's good. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell us about the school. Yeah, the school. You started the school. Yeah. And, and, uh, you, you started getting other, other students yeah, to the school? Yeah, other children. Mm -hmm. We started bringing more children. Most of the children were following Mr. Harold from the school he was in, because eh? uh. he was a good teacher. He was a good teacher. Actually, when I went to the school, he's the one who made me have the confidence and the hope that my son will be something. Mm. Yeah. So most of the children came mm, from him, from me, from all over, and we have never done any marketing, ma'am. And they always come. Sometimes I ask them, how did you find us? It was just like I was told by someone, by someone, by someone, because, mom, we are doing the right thing. So are all of them special? Most all of, of them, them are special needs? Most of them are most special needs, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. A majority yeah. of them are special needs. Right. But we have normal, we have typical kids. Yeah. Yeah, but mostly we like taking the special, because that's our calling. Yes. Me and Mr. Harun, that's our calling. Yes. He's a special needs teacher, and I'm a special needs parent. So when we combine the energies, right. mom, right. Hey, it's we blow it over. It's unbeatable. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. unbeatable. <laughs> <laughs> we blow okay. it over. Yeah. Because when a parent comes, she needs counseling from a mother, I'm there. When a parent comes, she needs to hear about academics. Will my son ever write? Mr. Harun, Harun is, is there. right there. Right. Yeah. Okay. We, we don't go looking for anything. For help out yeah, there. We are but now there. you have other teachers. We have many teachers, uh -huh. special needs teachers. Right. Yeah. And, you and we have occupational therapy. We have the special diet. We have a good environment. Pulse Garden School is a good school. It's a school of choice. It's called Pulse? Pulse. Pulse for necklace. Uh -huh. Pulse. The precious oh, stones. Pulse. Pulse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pulse. Okay. And yeah. where is it? Because they're Pulse. In Dome. Uh -huh. Yeah. Just next to Raraka Academy. Mm -hmm. Off Dome Drive, Nyati Drive. That's where we are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just at Nyati Drive. So you surround them with an atmosphere of love. Of love and compassion. A lot of love. And mom, we're in a gated community and they love the children. Wow. Something that surprised me, even my our own landlord loves the children so much. Wow. She loves the children. Mm -hmm. We love them. They are so good. So what so ages loving. do you deal with? We deal with early intervention. Yeah. Also oh, just the small ones? Just the small ones. Uh -huh. Yeah, from 3 to 12. Okay. Yeah, we don't like taking the big ones. Yeah. Yeah. But soon 12. we are growing, so we'll have boarding, mm -hmm. we'll have vocational training, we'll have a school, a senior school with special needs. We are growing, ma'am. So isn't it amazing that sometimes uh, what you go through mm. becomes what God uses yeah, your to empower others, yes. to give you a purpose, exactly. you know, yeah. a hope, a future. Yeah. So your pain, yeah. out of your pain, mm. comes out your, your, your destiny That's true. and your purpose in yeah, life. Yeah, because actually Jeremy is my purpose. Yeah, yeah I tried many things, ma'am. I was in the banking industry, I was not happy. I was in hardware, I was not happy. I was in hotel, I was not happy. But right now, ma'am, I can tell you, I am very happy. Wow. When I see the children, the special needs children. Laughing and enjoying. Laughing and running around. By the way, something, ma'am, I didn't tell you. Those kids don't have stress. You are the one, the parent who has stress. <laughs> They don't have stress. Yeah. Until you are not talking. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. uh -uh. They are good. 
them they know their ah, style. They are good. We are yeah. fine. What's all this talking we are yeah. talking about? What? We are talking fine. about what now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are good. The yeah. way they play around and I see them jumping up on the trampoline. Yeah. And I say, oh God, and they are so stressed. I yeah. wish I was the one jumping on that <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they that's were chanting and they were so happy. They are yes. so happy. Amen. Yeah. Oh, that's really yeah, awesome. Yeah, and all our parents are very satisfied. Wow. One parent comes and brings another child because yeah. they are satisfied by just the compassion and the empathy that they get from us. Yeah. Most of them come, they are broken, they are crying. And I was like, I was there. I used to cry every small time. Even one would ask me about my son, tears. But mama, as you always say, yeah. that God will always tell you, after you are done with crayons and mucus, yes, yes. after you are done with, now mm, we can talk. Wipe yourself now. Yeah. The, the talk, he talks yeah. job, eh? Yeah. Deal with me, mm. eh? Yeah. Talk like a man. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, so after you are done and you've wiped yourself, yeah. he says, now sit down, yeah. now we can talk. Yeah, we can yeah. talk. What is all yeah. these tears? Yeah. Don't you know that I'm using you yes. and Jeremy yes. to be of help to so many? Yeah, to reach many yes. others. Don't you know that yeah. you have a purpose? Yeah. Ha, Don't Jesus. you know that you have a destiny? Yes. Yes. Don't you know that Jeremy, everything worketh together for the good of all those who love God? Mm -hmm. That and was my verse. To his purpose, the yeah. One night mom when I was bitter because I had told God, my son should not get five before he talks. I want him to talk by his fifth birthday. I'd given God a, a deadline. Ultimatum. An ultimatum. Mm. So on that night, and God is so faithful, mm. on the night of my son's birthday, then he was not talking. I told God, we have to talk. Because I told you, he has to be talking by five years. And mm. he's not talking. Tell me what's happening. And God was silent. But in the middle of that night, mom, that is when God gave me that verse, that everything works together, work together, for, good. together for good for all those who love me. And this is your purpose, and this is your vision. Yeah, and that is exactly what happened. Wow. He showed me the school, he showed me everything, and he told me, go and start, I will be with you. And that is what God has done. Wow. He has been with us. Mom, we have gotten so much favor, even from the parents, from wow. the ministry. Mom, we were able to register our school in a record one month. Wow. Record. Wow. One month. One month. Uh, yeah. And I met with so many people trying to register their schools. And they're like, okay. We've been here for all years. Eh? Mm. How come? I was wow. like, special needs. God loves. God is amazing. Yeah, God just yeah. loves us. Yeah, it's woman without limits mm -hmm. that helped me, mom. And the daughters of Zion. Okay. I never miss the daughters for anything. Mom, you have helped me. There you have nurtured me. I always wanted to be like you. Some people say, I talk like you. I walk like you. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, that even the hairstyle now. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> see the shoes <laughs> now. I, really. <laughs> yeah. Because you really inspired me. Even oh. in my marriage, my husband is proud of you. Wow. Sa he says that every time I come to Daughters of Zion, I go back home, a very good wife. Very wow. good. Wow. So even when we have small fights, he's like, when is that Daughters of Zion coming? <laughs> <laughs> you need to go. <laughs> you need to go to the Daughters of Zion yeah. and come back being shaped, yes. shaped back and mm. a good wife mm. and a good girl. Yeah. Wow. So the Daughters of Zion mom has really helped me. Amen. It takes me through the man, then the woman without limits. Actually, that's where I got the vision. I as a person, that's where I got the vision. And I was like, Pastor Cindy Trimo was saying that the vision should be bigger than what you have. Yeah, and we didn't have anything. Me and Mr. Aaron, we didn't have anything. We, we just had the vision, ma'am. Only the vision. But God. But God. You see, in every vision, mm. and this is what you need to understand, <coughs> there is provision. Yeah. People wait for provision in order to get the vision, mm. but it doesn't work out like that. Mm. You have to have a vision for there to be a provision. Mm. They meet together and you begin to, s to sail, okay? Mm. So you <coughs> have to have a vision mm. in order to get the provision. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly oh, what that's God awesome. did, yeah. yeah. When, we got the, when I got the vision and I was like, my husband was in India, so I was just was helping him and told him I met with this good teacher and he told, us, he told me we can start something. And my husband was very much, go ahead. Not many men, mom, will allow their wife to be partners with a man. But my husband is a great man of valor. And wow. he understands and he knows the passion I have for the special needs children. Wow. And even Mr. Haron's wife, she's a good wife, a good friend of mine. She's there. Oh, she's here <laughs> yeah, too? Yeah, she's there. <laughs> wow, you better <laughs> zoom in there. Yeah. What? <laughs> you mean even you're here? Yeah. Wow. She's there. My husband and Mr. Haron's wife 
agreed to only support us oh. emotionally, okay. morally, and ah. financially. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, they only agreed to just support us. And they have of great, tremendous support. Yeah. They have been of good support. Actually, wow. they ha we were going in the house by my husband. Simu got the house where the school is. Wow. And he really loves Mr. Haron. He likes the passion and the zeal that he has. Yeah. And I salute him for allowing me to partner with this great man. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Man, yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank mm. you so much, Susan. Yeah. Yeah. I know that somebody has been absolutely blessed. Yeah. And if you have a child with autism, yeah. you need to just know that God never fails. Yeah. Do the right thing and let God do the rest. There is only so much that you can do as a human being but god has every answer yeah so trust him believe him and i know he who began a good work in you the bible says he is faithful to complete it this is woman without limits may god bless you have yourself the most amazing week mm -hmm. <laughs>